Okay. Uh, we're here today at Watts with uh, John Lenahan, and he is with Mount Cook Airlines. And uh, John, you're the director of uh, flight training there, right? That's right, Joseph. I'm the uh, crew training manager. Very good. And uh, yesterday we were in a conference, and the conference was on uh, simulator motion training and some of the issues of how important motion was and whatnot. And from my understanding, you're one of the first airlines really to use something called motion queuing. Maybe you could talk about that and how efficient that's been for you and, and how um, it's been valuable to your organization. Oh, it's been very valuable. Uh, the argument with uh, motion versus non-motion, you know, we have the seat queuing system, uh, which is, uh, obviously gives the motion to the pilot through the seat. The, uh, we had the visual queuing system with the level D visuals that we, uh, with the column visuals that we ordered. Um, and we got the sound queuing with the, the surround sound and all the uh, bass effects to give you the vibration. So our pilots, our line pilots who fly all the time, really can't tell the difference whether the airplane's fixed to the floor or on six sticks. Gotcha. So they're really getting the experience. Some of the issues or concerns were that there wasn't enough motion here where they wouldn't get a, 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 the full experience. Now, this is also being used for recurrent training too, right? That's right. We uh, At the moment, we just use it for recurrent training only. Our regulatory authorities uh, haven't given us the checking approval like the DGAC have uh, for other airlines, um, which we are working on concurrently. But as you know, the argument motion versus non-motion is... Uh, Never, uh, never ending, and uh, it's purely a perception, in my, in my belief, anyway. Sure, but so far you feel very comfortable with this unit, and it's a Mectronics unit. It's a Mectronics unit, FFTX. Mm -hmm. um, probably we're the first operator to actually buy a, mm -hmm. a, a simulator of this type. Um, a, uh, ATR have one in Toulouse. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, ATR is a manufacturer, so we're the first actual operator of ATRs to have a, have the device installed. Right, right. Also, in the past, you used to have, obviously, you're doing more training than you ever did before, is that correct? We do more training. It's easy to do the training because it's uh, the simulator is based in Christchurch, where we are, so uh, mm -hmm. it's at our home base. So, and before your, your pilots had to travel great distances just to do basic recurrent training? That's right. They had to go to Bangkok uh, twice a year, um, and for us from New Zealand to Bangkok, a day's flying, uh, two days in Bangkok, so really it's a week out of the pilot's life just to go to Bangkok to do his training. And certainly the expense is there too, but I guess the other benefit is to be able to do continuous training, which helps safety, I exactly. presume, yeah. as well. It, and we, we believe the standard of pilots increased, um, and which obviously will increase the safety, of course, but uh, it, it just enables the pilot to have the belief in themselves that they can handle emergencies or at all, at all times because they, they're doing that on, a, on a, an increased uh, regular basis. And they're sharing that information with each other. Yes, yes. Oh, that's great. Well, listen, thank you very much. It's all right, Joseph. Thank you.